In our first lesson, we will take a look at our Mogra cloner object. So I will add one and uh, immediately you will see that uh, pretty much nothing will happen unless you add an object for this cloner to generate from. So you have to fill it with some information. So let's create, a, let's say, a sphere. I will cut down this radius to, let's say, 20 and uh, I will lower this segment count to 16 since this sphere is too small and uh, blade 24 is a bit of an uh, overkill. Now let's make this uh, sphere a child of the cloner object and you will see immediately a change. I will just change my display setting to guard shading with lines. And uh, here under cloner object you have a bunch of options. So let's first talk about the uh, obvious ones and uh, for example this count will simply create a copies instances or better term is clones so let's say 10 clones for the purpose of this demonstration the second option just below that is an offset and uh, if you play with this you will simply offset the complete set of clones and you will offset it by exactly this amount here, this is the default value for the Y, so 50 centimeters in Y. Now, do notice that you cannot select the clones, you cannot manipulate them directly. The only way to manipulate them is through this cloner and other generators and effectors, as we will see. Also, by putting this uh, sphere under a cloner, you don't lose the ability to change the settings. So, for example, you can still change this to, let's say, 10 centimeters, and all the clones will reflect that change. So, everything stays nice and parametric. So, it's really non linear in its uh, concept and the way it operates. So, let's get back to our cloner settings and uh, I was talking about this offset and this offset will offset by exactly this value. So let's say that we want uh, our clones to sit exactly on the top of each other. So you would have to take this radius and simply enter the double value here. And I'm sure you understand why double value because uh, the radius really goes from the center outward so it goes in all directions that means from here let's just do that so from the center to here it's 10 centimeters and also from the center to here or any given point on the sphere is double the size so sphere is uh, effectively 20 centimeters in diameter i hope this is uh, understandable that's a really basic mathematics so if i put 20 here, my spheres will lie exactly on the top of each other. I did this simply because I believe it will be much easier to understand this mode here. So this offset will offset by exactly this amount. So all this position, scale and uh, rotation values here means you can modify them on a complete set of clones. So for example, you can move them in the X also and the changes will propagate through the clone. So let's put this to zero. Now this mode per step, this means that between any of these guys and uh, it really doesn't matter how many of them, you can see you can stack them as long as you want. You can enter ludicrous values here. So it really doesn't matter how big this number is, the gap between them will be always 20 centimeters. And if you remember correctly, everything in Sina 4D is calculated from the axis. So from the axis of, uh, let's just select this red color. So from the axis of this guy to this guy is 20 centimeters. Also for this guy and uh, so on and so forth. I hope this is clear enough. And I really know this may sound a little bit boring, but this is really, really crucial for you to understand. Now, for the sake of uh, easier following, I will put this to 
count of 10. So we really have a nice round number. So now we instructed the cloner to give us 10 clones in per step mode and the size of that step is 20 centimeters. If I change this now to a endpoint, Sina4D so will calculate all the values combined and uh, it will give us a value of 180. Now this may seem a little bit confusing because uh, some of you were maybe expected 200 here, but uh, let's just clarify this. If you count the gaps, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so the gaps are relevant, not the initial clone, and that really gives you an exact uh, combined value of uh, 180 centimeters. So in this mode, Sina4D really calculated from here to here, so it calculated 180 centimeters to the end point, as opposed to this per step value. And you see how smart it is, it simply calculated back to 20 centimeters for us. So now we have a step mode from here to here, which is 20 centimeters. I hope this is not too confusing because uh, Maybe you cannot really see the real difference now, but you will be able to see it later. Let me delete this little guy and uh, this amount is uh, really simple. So simply it will determine the percentage of this value that is set here or any of these uh, given values. So for example, you can maybe squash them as they progressed gradually to the last clone or simply set any other value you want here. So for example, you can rotate the clones and the changing of these values will propagate through the clones. So let's set this back to zero. This was 100%. So we will use defaults because it will be much easier to explain things. Now let's, before proceeding to these values here, let me just briefly explain what this fix clone means. So Let's just disable cloner for a second and uh, we'll move our sphere, let's say, 100 centimeters in this direction. So if I uncheck this fix clone, then all the clones that will be generated will be generated from the origin of the sphere. If I check the fix clone, then the generator will generate clones from the origin of the cloner, so that is really simple. Now this uh, render instances is pretty much self-explanatory. It will render instances of the clone and uh, will increase the performance in the viewport, but it doesn't work in some constellations within MoGraph. This fixed texture we will explain once we get to a uh, ways of texturing clones. So let's just for fun create a material here and uh, I'll load some color and show you the first and the most simple way to texture clones and that is to drop a material on the cloner object and all clones will receive the material so that is really simple. Now you will assign to these rotations here which uh, you can see they are controlling the clones. You'll also notice this step settings here so step mode size and rotations now this guy really controls the step size in percentage of whatever you have set here so if you scale this down the step size will go to zero if you set this to zero percent so 100 percent means 100 percent of these values now here these rotations will not influence the clones as these rotations. So for example, these guys now rotate on their individual axis. Here, this guy will rotate clones consecutively. So like this. And uh, I hope this explains it better than I can. So in this mode, they will revolve uh, 
around their individual axis and in this mode they will use a cloner origin as their axis okay so you can create really interesting effects and uh, maybe despair this and uh, stuff like that so you can pretty much feel the possibilities already so a lot of power is hidden in this uh, cloner object now this guy this step mode has uh, actually two modes first one that i showed you is uh so let's uh, create some value here like 4.1 in this first mode the step mode will uh, change the rotation steadily from clone to clone as opposed to this second mode this cumulative i hope this is pronounced this way really works in a different manner and um, will change the rotation between first and the less clone as opposed to this single value that is from clone to clone so you can see a difference here so this creates really more like a curved and a spiral effects as opposed to this single value which creates really a little bit more uniform and more straightened results so let's set this back to zero and uh, this pretty much covers this part of the cloner now we will take a look at this modes for the cloner itself so first one the default one is linear and uh, let's first check this radial mode so you can already see that this creates uh, clones in a radial fashion so you can pick a count you can uh, increase the radius you can choose which plane so for example they can lie on x z so you can undo that and uh, we have additional parametric settings here so like a start and end angle and we have an offset which uh, is not really representative of how useful offset can be here is the variation and the offset seed another mode here is a grid array so it will create a grid of clones based on the settings here so for example let's say five by five by five this is the overall size of the grid and this is the form of the grid so it can be a cubic spherical or cylindrical this fill if you decrease this value it will randomly pick out uh, some clones and uh, remove them from the grid all these modes so far that i have shown you are not really powerful as this object mode and you will see a bunch of settings will change now this object means that you can use any object in cina 4d that includes parametric object polygon object and spline object to put the clones onto so you can generate the clones on the surface on that object so let me show you a simple example of that let's create uh, maybe a torus object and uh, decrease this ring radius and uh, maybe divide this in half so we have uh, really a smaller object and there are basically two ways you can tell this cloner to use an object to clone to the first one is to drop this guy here or the second one is to create a cloner as a child of that object and uh, any way you choose you will get this result so let's actually use this method which is much more clear now you will see that uh, cina created clones on the surface of this uh, torus and uh, actually i will decrease this radius to five so you can see this much more clearly and notice how everything stays parametric and non-linear so it's non-destructive that's the power of MoGraph here under cloner the settings here and the options will change based on the object that is inside so for example if i create a spline and put it here then the settings here will change and i will show you that right after i explain this a little bit so this is a really simple so here you will choose how those clones will be 
distributed so they can be distributed per vertex per edge or per polygon center or surface and here you can actually set the count and they will appear randomly on the surface you can even create polygon selections and constrain the creation of clones just to selections also there is a volume option here which will create the clones in the volume of the object and once again the old rule that everything is calculated from the axis so this guy will actually go through the volume because uh, the volume of this sphere is calculated from the axis so we have some additional settings here you can choose a volume mode as a surface so it will put them on a surface and uh, you really have a creative freedom to create uh, really personalized clone constellations a lot of power and a lot of flexibility here this up vector will simply tell clones where to look with their axis and uh, i will use another example to explain this which uh, we will use just after this one so let me get rid of this torus we will use another object so let's create a spline object here and uh, any type of spline is uh, accepted so let's go with a circle spline maybe a tad uh, smaller and uh, let's set it to exist so it lies on the floor so to speak so clone really accepts uh, pretty much everything you throw at it so it can accept splines polygons uh, parametric objects and uh, almost anything in Cina for this so let me show you if I drop this circle spline here inside how settings will change and there is one really important relationship for you to understand that depending on the object set here corresponding options will be presented here so you won't get this type of options if you don't use a spline so here when object that will receive clones is a spline you can also determine a clone count so let's say 20 you can choose how they will be distributed so it can be a step of this value set here it can be even regardless of the segmentation of the spline or it can be vertex so it will distribute itself according to the vertices on the spline let's get back to count and uh, maybe just for sake of explaining some things here i will drag this sphere out and use a different object i can even hide it so let's select something that is not uh, symmetrical in any way and there is this pyramid object we will also scale it to same size so 20 and we will drop it under cloner now some settings here will be much more easier to understand let's in fact even go up to 10 like this now let's get back to our cloner object so i can show you these options that uh, will be much easier with this pyramid object so currently all these pyramids are figuratively speaking looking downwards so what if you want to change that that is where this rail option comes in so let's copy this circle spline and rename it rail like this and drop it here in the rail slot so you can see now the clones oriented themselves towards this rail spline so if you drag this upwards you will see them orienting in that direction so you also have some additional options like target and scale we'll talk about these ones later now do note that uh, for example if you scale this guy the clones will really look in that uh, direction so let's leave it like this and uh, i'll just hide the rail from the viewport but clones will stay oriented uh, let's say their logical manner now let's create some motion on these guys so let's see if i 
can drag this a little bit more upward so we have access to all these settings. So now, if I enable this rate in percentage, I will actually make this clones once I hit play to really move according to the percentage here. So let's say 20% of the rate. This is a, like a speed value. And uh, if I want them to move in another direction, I will set this to negative value. So we have a clockwise movement. Now, based on the settings here, you can define the start point for the clones. Also, you can define the end point for the clones. And uh, if you disable this loop guy, then the clones will not loop, so to speak. So they will not appear again undisrupted. So like this, this is uh, really a closed looping system as opposed to this one, which is uh, where clones actually disappear when they reach end of the line, figuratively speaking. Here, of course, you have a variation option, so you will create some sort of a randomness in within these clones and you have a random seed. So as you change this, you change the seeding value and you will get different results every time. This volume spread, let's actually reset this to default. This volume spread will really spread these clones uh, a little bit uh, more in uh, all directions outwards from the spline center. Now, we barely scratched the surface, so let me just say that this smooth rotation value will actually create uh, smoothed transitions between the clones. So if you set this to zero, no rotation will occur, so the clones won't be moving. If you enable this smooth rotation, you can actually stop this, you'll probably notice a slightly different results in how clones are oriented. So let's give it a try. And you can see a minimal difference and uh, probably this difference will be higher when you will use a different clone constellation or different spline or object or something like that. Now let's get rid of this circle and rail. I will enable the sphere and you see the cloner won't do anything because it's in the object mode. Let's go back to linear mode so we will explain this additional clones option. So one would ask what happens if you drop two objects in the cloner and that's a really good question. So let's drop that sphere and see what happens. And the result is you will have a repeated sequence of the clone according to a sequence in the object manager. So you will have pyramid sphere, just like here. So pyramid sphere, pyramid sphere, and it will repeat itself for this number of times. So any number you set here. Let's in fact create a third object. So maybe we can even use a cube. Let's use the same size. So 10 by 10 by 10. And let's drop that also in the cloner and uh, some things will be much easier to understand. So once again, we have pyramid, sphere, cube. So here from the origin of the cloner, pyramid, sphere, cube, then it repeats itself since we have three objects here only. Now, just bear with me for a few minutes. I know this may seem a little bit boring, but it's absolutely crucial for you to understand if you want to become proficient in MoGraph. Currently, our clones are set to iterate, and that means exactly what I described uh, earlier. That means they will iterate according to a sequence set here in the object manager. We can choose a different type of uh, interpolation for the clones. So let's say random. So it will randomly pick between every single object here. And you will also notice that you will get some additional settings. So in iterate mode, you didn't have this random mode. So observe carefully if you get additional settings. So you can change the seed and you can see the results 
in the viewport every time I select a different number, it will use that number to derive a random value. This blend mode will give its best to distribute these clones to this clone count set here. So you see it really created uh, three pyramids, three spheres and four cubes. So just to illustrate this a little bit better, we'll increase this value. So you will see it will give its best to keep that uh, general relationship set here. Okay, so pyramids, spheres, cubes. Let's set this back to 10. And the last mode is a sort mode. And this mode will really not do anything unless we will have some fun with effectors. And uh, that is exactly what we are going to do in our next lesson after we briefly go over this uh, transform tab. So to really to simplify, this sort mode works best once effectors are used. So let's go back to this transform mode. And now here you can set the uniform rotation values for the clones. For example, you can uh, maybe scale them uniformly because in this mode, you will see that these rotations actually propagate differently through clothes. So if you want to set something uniform here, for example, if you want to move this 100 centimeters in certain direction, you will do it here under transform. So this is just like a transform tab for any of these guys here, just as a regular object, as opposed to these settings here, you'll see that if I set this to some value, it will propagate differently through clones. I hope this makes sense. There are some additional settings here. So for example, you can set the color of the clone, but currently it's overridden by this material set to cloner. So just as we said in the intro lesson, we have a cloner, which is now a generator. We will cover these other generators here. And we created a parametric system. And now if we want additional control, we will use effectors. And every effector you create, if you want it to affect your clone constellation, you will have to load it here from the MoGraph menu and drag it into this effector list of the cloner. This wraps it up for an intro for a cloner object. And uh, we will take a look at the effectors in our next lesson.